place, actually. Second is, is that when you advance power, the engine speeds up, and you can tell something ain't right, because it's instead of getting torque on the ground. If you're doing that to the belt, you're ruining the belt. Not good. Uh, the third way is that uh, uh, when you're actually operating the engine, and if the belt's loose, you're going to feel um, it will feel you'll feel, you're going to feel like something has just gone wrong. I'm not getting full power. So uh, the uh, uh, don't do that. Just don't do that. <laughs> and the procedure okay. is not written down in the manual for how to torque it down. Uh, that is how to tension the belt. But you loosen this 12 millimeter, which is a great big thing. We got a big L1 and we chopped it off and then we put a socket in it and then we use a torque wrench here. 38 foot pounds of torque on the prop gives you that. Go ahead and feel that so you can see yeah, I was noticing it. it tight. Yes, it is. It's a very tight. And it's a ribbed belt that tracks on the, okay. the two pulleys. The next piece is the spark plugs down here. These spark plugs, they're both good right now. Uh, I've got replacements. I bought set of four. Read the, uh, uh, make sure you use a torque wrench when you put those in. I've got a If three you over torque them, you'll strip them out and then you have to put in helicoils. I have had a, a I, have had, I have stripped one plug over the last three years on an engine. I noticed, I I, it, I noticed that you I had the out victim. there when Gene was checking these uh, that day, you mm -hmm. had an electronic one, uh, torque, torque wrench. Yeah, we do. Yeah. We have a really nice one that we bought at Sears. That's where I'm online looking. But if you, mine from yeah. Harbor Freight. <laughs> but if you ever find that a plug is loose and you can tighten it back up, think hard about whether or not it's been stripped out. Okay. And that is a repair. It's not a hard repair job, but you know probably what you'd end up doing then you know, is just pull the head, and then you're going to have to get a new head gasket. No big deal. There are almost no moving parts in this engine. So every time something runs rough, the culprit is going to be your carburetor or your gas. And uh, uh, we have had one engine stoppage due to a, a pinched fuel line, and it wasn't hmm. actually pinched. We used the wrong kind of material for the fuel line, and it was a rubber, and it was disintegrating. Don't use ethanol. And, and <laughs> you can use ethanol. But we also, we now use the correct line, kind of fuel line. You can oh, see it here. Okay. That is, that's it's real, blue. that blue stuff is real fuel line. Blue fuel, uh, flex. Okay. Now, the muffler, as you can see, <laughs> the big, biggest problem, they changed the kind of muffler uh, on me. And as a result, uh, the engine produces a whole lot more power. I mean, it's amazingly powerful. Now, this muffler comes from? Compact radial engines. Compact it's a stock radial. muffler. Okay. Okay. It will eventually rust out. I have had, uh, I mean, I've had muffler problems. If you ever have a problem with the muffler, what you're going to notice is a change in your noise, which means you've developed a hole, and it also mm -hmm. means you're going to have a reduction in power because this engine is counting on the back, you know, back it's pressure. tuned. This is a yeah. tuned system here. Um, this is mounted back there to another uh, uh, Lord mount there. And that's because we could never figure out a way that we liked. When we originally, this is one of the things that we Yeah, you through. had this We had it suspended. That puts too much, there's a lot of, of power vibration. And that coupled it all into the airframe. That just drove me nuts. So we ran it back there, and it's that suspended. works great. No, I like that idea. And I have dive tested this to, to uh, over 80 miles an hour on the <laughs> thing. Uh, and it all held together good. But the, what we did here, in case that ever failed, is that this one here will hit the, hit the uh, firewall okay. and prevent it from rolling up any further. Yeah. And we replaced the bottom of the floorboard with aluminum. And we're doing that with all of our I airplanes like now. The, the fact yeah, that's, that's fabric there, but it's aluminum down there. Yeah. So uh, what you're looking for around here, uh, consider a couple of other things. I've had a fatigue failure on one of, of these, these brackets. The brackets. I do not expect that to happen again. The aluminum that's being used there is 2024. It's very, it's as strong as steel nearly, and it's fatigue resistant. Down here, when you do a pre flight, see all the welds around there? Mm -hmm. I want you looking for cracks. Now, the deal is, is that there are gussets. You can see a gusset. I have my finger on one yeah. to carry the loads. And uh, there's a, so there's a gusset in every corner, and there's multiple ways in which the airframe is taking the load off the motor mount. Uh, the motor mount itself is made out of chromoloy steel, 
and uh, it is distributing the loads really effectively to the four corners there. Mm -hmm. So just this is going to be part of your pre-flight though to make sure that your airframe hasn't developed any cracks. And that fuel line that doesn't get pinched. Yep, it. and that's just a rub strip right there. Okay. Um, it's a little premature, but these brakes, they're amazingly effective. That's going to be need them. Well, time, you, time you throttle back, yeah. you're going to end up. I think you'll need them. Okay. <laughs> Speaking from experience. <laughs> okay. Uh, and those they, are screws. They are flathead. literal screws. Yes. Flathead, they are. flathead, slotted Great screws. Screws that are mating in here with these machine structures on the okay. side. So I don't like that. Uh, we managed it through the Loctite. Uh, an alternate solution might be to use a deep hex head screw socket head with a safety wire. But um, okay, I mean we we've. We've, Either a hex head or a socket head. Yeah, but we've been doing it now this way for for a couple of years. And uh, um, another way to know is, is that when you land and you realize that this wheel, that see this rotor here on mm -hmm. the disc brake, if you ever see that doing like that, that's Something's a sure loose. sign that you got a problem. Something's so loose or not that. Here's another thing. We use this heavy-duty cotter key instead of a screw and a nut. The point of that is it's simple and it reduces weight. Uh, I've never ever had a cotter key fail, but if you take them off, which you will do once a year to do your own annual, you don't have to do an annual, but I know that you're going to. When you take it off to inspect your bearings and so forth, you'll always replace this with a fresh new, cotter key. You will cotter never, key. never reuse a cotter key. I'm sure your A&P friend no. will tell you the same thing. Yep. So that's it. The springs. We've never ever had a failure of a spring, and we've sold a whole bunch of these. They're used on Kit Fox lights. They're beautiful. They really do an amazing job of keeping the landings uh, and the bumps smoother. Well, it gives you something to resistance against. Yep, but uh, better than old bungee cords yep. that you see on. But I assume that if the spring fails, that it would collapse to one side. You know, you'd know it. But be aware of that. Your attach bolts right here. And make sure that they're on uh, as well, and of course they are. And those are. Yep, right there. What I'm looking for here is bent tubing. Don't ever lift or pull your plane. This is not strong enough. You know, it's a jury strut, and this one is perfect. Everything's perfect. Just don't grab into it. So, tight bolts all the way around. So you put a plaque. Yeah. Do not push. Do not pull. Okay. Here's another thing. Um, these check nuts should be tight. Are those now? No, they're, no, they're just they're just they're okay. still. Okay. Obviously, if the check nut isn't tight, uh, that's a problem. Okay. Would the plane fly? Yeah. Uh, if you don't have a tight check nut, then uh, the rod can pull out, uh, and on top of that, it can lead to a fatigue failure in the bolt. Another thing that we did on this one plane. I did not like the way that this wood end rib, all of these ribs are aluminum, but the cap ribs are, we always are use wood. wood. And what we've started to do is we've run a piece of backer 2024 angle aluminum inside, and that makes the tip stronger. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, so that's what these are. These are connected to that. They're screwed into the yeah, they're bolted back up there. Okay, here is, uh, you can see that we've got a reinforcing bracket. This is the plane that had the fatigue failure on one of these things, and so all of it's been changed out with these additional strength reinforcing brackets. Yeah, I remember so that. Uh, I'm looking now to make sure the that the you had. had. In fact, right here is where the fatigue failure was, and this, this one's been doubled. Up. Yeah, it's been tripled now. Yeah. So that's all good. Um, now, explain something to me. Sure. The difference on flaperons and ailerons. The flapper on is just the fact that the air is no. from the lower side? No, no, no. Uh, the difference, first of all, ignoring the concept of flaps for a moment, these are ailerons. Right. However, due to the fact that we have articulated them into the flap system, they will droop together when we deploy flaps. I'll show you. Okay. So, right now, there's zero, one, two, three notches of flaps. Got it? And but they still work like ailerons. Okay, all right, I'm with you. Back that, to that's what I was kind of wondering. 
I was thinking it moved from here, the bracket, but it doesn't. It's, it's all within the. Okay. Back over here. Now we're back to the parachute. Okay. And the parachute. Somewhere. Somewhere, there is a pressure indicator. I don't know where it is. That shows how much pounds of pressure in the parachute air bottle. Maybe on the bottom. Yeah, maybe on the bottom. Yep, it's right there. I'm holding it in my hand. Okay. And what I'm seeing right now Zero. is not good. <laughs> okay. I think this parachute needs some maintenance. Probably needs, we'll have to call them. That's seriously. That says there's no air in the bottle. Okay. That's well, over a period of time. And I, I didn't think it did that, actually. That may be a warranty thing. So, yeah, and what happens then is boom. All this breaks loose. All these not tie wraps break loose, and it's going to rip off the uh, panel, the roof as well and you're going to be suspended on two points. Enjoy the ride. Yeah. There's uh, so, hey, hey, we just learned about the parachute. When I come back here, I always twang the wires. I'm learning to feel what they feel like. Um, it is possible that they can get a little bit loose, and uh, we can play with that just due to the number of uh, uh, washers that we use. We've also seen that we use washers to tune. Take a look here. Okay. The position of this thing has been straightened and tuned by using a number of washers. Okay. But uh, this is all good. So I like everything. And if you ever have one that's loose, uh, this is where your A&P friend can probably help you a great deal to uh, redo a wire. Well, it's a steel strap, so if this nothing thing, else, you skid on it. That's, yeah, but actually, yeah, you know, if you wanted to, I mean, it would damage it. That's just a, a, but, uh, yeah. So. I bought a set of four mm -hmm. wheels and swivels mm -hmm. over at Harbor Freight, because I'm, I'm going to make a rolling, another rolling bench because I want to get a bigger mm -hmm. mill. But it's about the same size as that. Okay, and uh, this looks That's gnarly, it. but it's actually, I bent it by hand, and it's just right. So the control surfaces are very, very well balanced, balanced just as the way I've got them set. Okay. Check along here as well. This structure in there, that was all redone. That was part of what I learned, is that we, were, we, were, we, were, we had too weak of a structure. This piece that you see right there, that's a standard piece, and then there's actually a piece of sheet aluminum that's plating it. So this is mm. a triangular structure that goes from the bottom to the top. It's much like the skin okay. on the side of the fuselage. And if you're going to lift, lift yeah. from there. That's the only place that you have permission to lift the plane okay. on the back. Do not lift it no, yeah. from yeah. the bottom. You'll bend that. This <laughs> is like quarter-inch steel tubing. So if you want to lift it, this is the place to lift it right there. Um, Back over here, uh, we've got this. That's all good. We have had these bend here. And if it's bending here, it's going to break. And if it does bend here, we've got a couple of options. One is, is that we can put some more thread on there and redo it. Two, we can replace the cable. Cables are not expensive. Okay. So if it's bending, uh, that's showing us that, uh, that there's impending trouble there. But I have had it one bend. Yeah, because if it, bring, it bends at the, yeah. the threads, it'll break right there. Eventually. Yeah. I've never had one break, but I have had one bend and it caught it and uh, okay. fixed it. Same over here. Bolts tight. Everything's in place. Nobody's banged. This is another thing, is you cannot lift here. This is very thin aluminum on this trailing edge structure. Yeah, because this is just... A little yeah. light gauge. Yes. Here, you really want to pick it up. The only in place is the, the frame. Right here, see, this is where your spar is. Yeah. It's right there and here. So you can do a little bit of manhandling here on the wing, but never ever from the trailing edge or from the trailing edge. And this is all the spar sense. all the way up here. This is a, the spar here. Mm -hmm. 
So this, this is an aluminum tube. I think there's like a one and a half inch extension here. Yeah. Uh, we use a solid aluminum tube all the way now, but on this one, I remember it was like a 12 foot tube, and we needed a 12 foot one and a half inch tube. <laughs> so we slip the sleeve in there. Yeah. yeah. All of these ribs that are aluminum um, are tied. And yeah, this is an aluminum strap that comes around here. Strap comes around this one. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. They're all, they're all, the fabric is all tied. It is on the top, it isn't on the bottom. And you can see that it's loose. And what's going to happen is as soon as you fly, see how it's every other rib? Yeah. That will come right up there. You'll see it. It's kind of fun to look at because it looks like it's tied then. And uh, this is a machined aluminum piece in there. And these are all aircraft grade rivets. We don't use aircraft materials on everything, obviously. But there's a few places we do. And these rivets are a pretty good, good example. Every one of these rivets has a shear strength of something like 350 pounds. Now with the carbon fiber, you, you glue it on and yeah. wrap it with carbon yeah. fiber rope it's, it's and glue it. Exactly. You got it. But this is actually uh, mounted to the tube. So okay. our bolts are here. That's a good thing. Bolts are here. All good thing. Everything looks good. We've made it back around here. Because this is a pin, uh -huh. not a nut. Yeah. It just has the keeper on it. Just what you see. And where the, the back one has... Because it's permanently on, we leave, leave them that. Yeah. 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 The way to get in is backwards, stick your butt in and roll. And kind of like a Remos. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Do not use this as a grab bar. No, no. You can you can use this, or you can you know you can get around here like that, or you can use this. Don't use this either for entry or exit. Okay, so you're okay. inside the cockpit. Let's get familiar with the with the controls. Um, that's our starter button. Starter. This is our uh, ignition. That's ignition. hot. That's not. This is your avionics master. Uh -huh. All right. right over there. Figured that. Okay. okay. So everything is squawk free and working as of this moment. <laughs> <laughs> Your job. <laughs> it may not be later, but it is working it is, now. Everything's okay. working right now. Um, the uh, radio is really easy to use. I'm not going to go into how to use it. I've got I downloaded. But it's a beautiful correct. little radio. Uh, and uh, turn it on. And yep. This is what you change. Uh, mm -hmm. To the frequency, yep. Mode and priority. And I was reading about that. I wanted to play with it. Before. Here's your push to talk. Push to talk. Right on the stick. The uh, airspeed indicator. You can see right now yep. it's right at zero. Speed wise, uh, first of all, when you take off, things are going to be happening so fast that I'm not looking at the speed as a reference for takeoff. In other words, you hit the power, in just a few seconds you will be airborne. Tail comes up and the little controls come Yeah, I, what I do is I push the, the stick forward, the tail does come up, and about the time the tail comes up, about one and a half seconds later it wants to you, fly. You want, you and you start pulling start back. Start pulling back gradually. Mm -hmm. And um, then I'm on my rudder pedals and my aileron. That's why when you do your first solo in this thing, you're going to do it on the day. Your ideal day is going to be six knots of headwind straight down the runway, absolutely no gusts. So that means your takeoff roll is going to be shorter, your landing roll is going to be shorter and softer, and you won't have to worry about control issues at all. Okay? At, uh, back up uh, over here. So okay. these are working great. Until you move the EGT probe, it's going to be showing you around 1,500, 1,450 to 1,500. Yeah, it's like 200 degrees hotter than what it really is. We just put this one in. You remember from my blog post that we had an in-op. This is brand new. I didn't, no, I didn't know this one. It, it didn't show up when you flew that one day up yeah. there, about 5,400. Yeah, so that's a brand new instrument right okay. there. Uh, Speed-wise on here, uh, actually uh, running, okay, back over here on your on your talk. This is really your indication of engine it's power. It's and, and uh, talk. And hours, and I don't know. I think it's brand new. I just ordered a bunch of them. I'm assuming Gene put one of the in here. Talk-wise, full power is around 54, 5,500 RPM. The book okay. says 4,900 RPM. I've talked to Leon. This is the exact same engine that's the MZ202, where they use two carbs and give yeah. it a red line of like 6,000 RPM. 
Yeah, that's what I So, read. and he says it, the engine doesn't care how fast it's going. So the way we've got okay. it set up, full power is going to be around 5,400. 5, and cruise, a comfortable cruise, is probably around 4,900 RPM. What's your, what's your burn rate on that? I really don't know. I never have figured that <laughs> you out. You haven't flown her I knew what it used to be back in the good old days on the same exact okay. engine with the other muffler. Okay. And back then... Uh, it was not. It was like an hour and twenty minutes from start to empty, give or take. So the and the, we didn't have the carb set up like we did now, and I never got a consumption test done. So I, mount my, I got a timer, and I won't mount my yeah. timer out here, so I can. So anyway, uh, speed wise, so what you're going to be seeing in cruise is probably somewhere around fifty-five to 60, sixty, somewhere okay. right in that area, maybe a little bit more, but uh, right around in there. Um, the landing speeds, uh, coming down towards the numbers, you're going to be around 50. I mean, you've read all that on my, on my blog yeah, and how to do it. Yeah, you want 1.3 times uh, the uh, stall speed, so that's, that's going to be around 40. Stall speed actually 30? is right around 30. 30, mm -hmm. so it makes it around well, 42. Well, with the weight, yeah, I think 40, you want to be a little faster. 42, 42, 42 would be the low My end. impression is that's too fast. Too, too fast? Too slow, I mean, too I'm slow? sorry. Okay. But my problem is, I rarely am looking at the instruments. I'm you're flying, listening and, I'm listening and feeling, and yeah. you're going to do the same thing. It was the weirdest thing. You realize you get to a point, you're no longer, this is like, instruments, got to have instruments. And it's like, wait a minute, I have instruments, and the only one I really care about is this one, my engine temps. Everything else is just the feel of the plane and how high am I, stuff like that. But as you've seen, this plane is an excellent climber. And, uh, yeah. you know, you'll be doing that, what you're saying, climbing up to 12 or 2,000 or whatever it is that you want to do above the ground. Okay, so when I do a pre-flight, we've done what we've done. We get in, we start the engine. You're not going to take off until you have cylinder head temperatures of at least 250 or so, which will only take about two minutes. The whole point is don't get in the plane, start the engine, and hit the throttle and go fly. No. Let your engine warm up. <laughs> warm up. Um, your mag check is real simple. So when the engine's running... You know, uh, 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 yeah. You're gonna make it's sure you're gonna stop. Or yeah. it's gonna run. Make okay. sure your kill switch is working okay. Okay. Your avionics master right there, and the separate switch over there. Your battery connection is down here. You've got a battery down here. I and, see it. Yep. I mean, you got to hook the battery up and to the power. This is a standard Dean's connector, which comes straight out of the radio control world, capable of handling 125 amps. Works okay. great. It's, every, it's the only thing we use. And I do not believe that the alternator is hooked up on the engine. And what that means is, is that the battery, uh, it'll start the engine, no problem. Uh, but uh, you need to get a trickle charger out here and get this thing on a trickle charger. Okay. I can just lift it out of there and take yeah, it home. Yeah, you can. That's exactly. I've got a, a 12 volt charger at home. Okay. I just, need, on I like just need to get a Dean's in. Uh, well, you can Connector. move the charger up to the to the raw leads yeah. down there in the battery. But yeah, it comes right out of there. So right it, it's exactly designed for that battery right there. Okay. okay. Uh, so you're sitting at the end of the runway. You checked your mags. Um, starting the engine. Uh, let's back up to that. I have always started this engine with uh, starter fluid. I've noticed that. In, uh... And we've done it over and over. And uh, unless the engine warm, that's the way to do it. Now, does that mean, uh, from where you're at right now, it is possible to reach out here and spray forward right into the carburetor. The engine will start easily with the starter fluid. We do not have the prime hooked up on this engine. It can be done. Um, and I was just talking to Leon about that, and the next two engines that he's sending me he has redone where he's, the reason that we, it's difficult is because the engine is inverted. And if we used his stock configuration, all it would do, would, uh, all the fluid would run straight it down the car. It runs down into the... So what we need to do is to tap the manifold on the intake manifold. And he's doing that for me on, his, on the next two engines that he's preparing to ship to me right now. Okay. So we can do that. I should say you can do that. Um, you tell me how. And I can, oh, it's you easy. You take it apart and drill and tap. Yeah. Easy enough. Yeah. But uh, so anyway, we start it with the starter fluid and uh, we crack the throttle. That quarter. Yep. Yep. That'd be just fine. 
and reach out here and spray down into there. Use one of the and starter fluids with a... This is the choke? There's nothing there. That's not hooked up to a single thing. It's just sitting there. It's waiting to be used. Oh, okay. Uh, we, that's a standard part. So, okay. engine will start easily, and uh, the first time it starts, you're going to be shocked and surprised, because if you have the throttle open quite a bit, the it's plane will want to move. <laughs> Better have your feet on the brakes. Yeah, that's heels, right. heels on the brakes. Well, first time you do this, you're going to do it with a shocks. friend and shocks. Yeah. You're not going to start it up sitting here by yourself. Yeah, that's one of the things I want to make at home on the table saw. Okay. So now, you're, now you've got the engine running. We're at the end of the runway. You've done your checks on your engine. You're going to do your checks on your flaperons. Mm -hmm. This is the things that I check every time when I'm sitting here. Uh, obviously, I'm checking to make sure that I've got full and smooth range of motion on my elevator and mm -hmm. that I've got range of motion on my ailerons and that I look out and I can actually see them doing their thing. Yeah. I'm using one notch of flaps for takeoff and for landing. I think you're on the... Whoa, 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 whoa. You're breaking it there, buddy. There's a button on the end there. It locks into position at three different positions. Okay. Yeah, I think that's all okay. So it yep. should be back to zero. Yep, yeah, so set it at one. There you go. So you're set at one, and uh, um, uh, you are ready there to go. go. Oh, yeah. You've got to turn fuel on. Well, we assume we did that because okay. the engine started. Let's put it this way. There's the primer. Yep. Got a primer bulb in there for getting the fuel up to the carburetor. Okay. Yep, 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 yep. And there's your parachute. Pull. Okay, we've got a safety pin on the parachute. That's right here. I won't pull it out now. Okay. But I pull it out and I always tuck it right underneath my floorboard right there. Okay. Got it? Yeah. Okay. Do you got your seatbelt on? Nope. Not flying yet. <laughs> that's that's, pretty... back, that's the back side of the frequency list, yeah. the checklist that I have. Is a, it's called safety. Set the level to level this up. I realize that the tail end has to come up. You use these rails exactly. as level? This is your datum. Okay. This is your datum. Datum. Right All right. That's what so I was... you put your level right there, and then you weigh them separately. Okay. Now, as soon as you pull it out, and keep your... Yeah, exactly. Keep this thing supported so it doesn't just flop down. And don't lose these. <laughs> we always just leave them uh, on, the, uh, on the cable after we pull them out. On the cable rather than the... Mm-hmm. Good point. Whoops. Get better at this, I'm sure. Oops. Ah. Okay, got that? Got now, that. Now, the reason you don't want them to flop hard is because this is what happens. Now, I'm going to leave... Oh, okay. This has been left as a project for you. Putting it on adds a slight amount of weight, but what I have done is because they get boogered up is that we've just cut some nice aluminum and riveted on a trim plate that completely hides all the booger ups. Got it? Okay. I can so, do that. Yeah. I got stock at home. I think I got a piece of stock there mm -hmm. that makes Brian's chair out there. Now when we put on the doubler, we threw in this uh, bolt. And so that cutout right there was to allow the bolt to clear through when they come up like that. Okay. And they do have to come up. Okay. So